My name is Mikhail Ignatiadis. I'm treating patients with breast cancer at the Jules Bourdain Institute in Brussels, in Belgium. Today we will focus on the emerging topic of HER2 mutations in breast cancer. HER2 genomic aberrations, including HER2 mutations, have been observed in more than 25 tumor types. HER2 mutations and amplifications are mutually exclusive in more than 90% of the cases. These mutations have been detected using newer technologies such as next generation sequencing. HER2 mutations in solid tumors are clustered within hotspots, either in the extracellular or in the kinase domain of the HER2 receptor. The frequency of specific HER2 mutations is associated with the site of cancer, as you can see in the highlighted examples of breast and lung cancer. So, what we have learned from preclinical models, do HER2 mutations predict for sensitivity to anti-HER2 targeted agents? In breast cancer, investigators from Washington University demonstrated using functional studies that seven out of 13 HER2 mutations tested were activating mutations. Based on cell growth inhibition, they showed that all seven HER2 activating mutations were sensitive to neratinib, whereas lapatinib was less potent. A limitation of the above preclinical models is that the retroviral transduction of HER2 mutations that was used to produce these mutant cell lines does produce a lot of copies of HER2 mutation which does not accurately reflect what is happening in patients' tumors. Investigators from John Hopkins have challenged the notion that HER2 mutations predict for sensitivity to anti-HER2 targeted agents. They have studied the functional consequences of seven HER2 mutations using an isogenic panel of HER2 mutant knock-in human breast epithelial cell lines. These cell lines have been produced using gene editing. Intriguingly, the majority of HER2 mutations did not induce oncogenic changes and did not predict for sensitivity or resistance to neratinib or lapatinib in these cell lines. But beyond preclinical models, what is the evidence from clinical studies on the value of HER2 mutations to predict for sensitivity to anti-HER2 targeted agents? There have been already several case reports from patients with tumors with HER2 mutations that have responded to anti-HER2 targeted agents, either alone or in combination. During the last San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, preliminary data suggested encouraging activity of neratinib monotherapy, but more importantly, of the combination of neratinib plus fulvestrant in patients with HER2 non-amplified but here to mutant metastatic breast cancer. Here you see a patient that has responded to this combination after progressing on prior fulvestran. Ongoing clinical studies aiming to enroll more than 500 patients with various solid tumors and HER2 mutations are exploring the activity of anti-HER2 targeted agents in this setting. These studies will address two critical questions. Can we use HER2 mutations to select patients for treatment with anti-HER2 targeted agents alone or in combination? And what is the predictive value of different HER2 mutations in different cancer types? HER2 mutations is just one example highlighting the challenges and opportunities when genomics move to the clinics for precision medicine. I believe there will be more such examples in the near future and this is exciting for our patients.